All right, here we go. Okay, um, I'm going to paint some WizKid pack mules. They're pre-primed. I've done a little clean up, but I didn't want to knock too much of the prime off, so we're just going to go for it. I've been playing a lot of Saga lately, and Saga needs mules for some of the scenarios, plus they're just good, general, useful Wargaming figures. And I did a little research, looked up mules on the internet a little bit, and I found out that they tend to have whitish, light muzzles, a little bit around the eyes. Sometimes the bellies are light, sometimes they're not. And then sometimes they're lighter as they go down on the, on the uh, mule, and sometimes they're darker as they go down with the black mane. I'm going to do the darker as they go down because it's the least amount of white. I'm going to try to preserve the white around the muzzle and the eyes. And if I overdo that there, I'll put a, a white glaze over there to bring it back. Uh, and then they've got all these great um, packs and, you know, crates and bundles. And so I'm going to try to do those pretty uniquely. So I'm going to do these guys the way I've been doing my horses lately, which is a technique that's saved me a lot of time lately and I've really liked. And that's using some glaze medium and some ink and kind of a little bit of water and just doing a glaze uh, a glaze ink wash in layers and it's kind of like doing a uh, um, it's kind of like just doing a, a glazing or a tinting uh, the ink and the white prime and the glaze medium i just put the glaze medium in to get the ink to be not water soluble after it dries. If you ink and then ink and then ink, the ink will reactivate and just becomes a mess. So by putting the glaze medium in it, it turns the ink into a, a more paint-like product. And um, that tends to do really well. So I'm just putting a few drops of this ink. I'm trying to get some. I don't want to use a dropper because I don't want to waste a lot of it, but I may have to do a dropper. Yeah, this looks fine. All right, and then there we go. Maybe if I use my brush, I can get some of that off there. Yeah. All right, I can I can actually probably just take a brush full. There we go. That's plenty. All right, and yeah, that's much more pigment than I care to have. So I'm going to take just a drop of water. Here we go. Six drops of water. Add a little more glaze medium because that's going to be a little thin. And that's my mix. All right. And that was all off camera. But what we're doing here is just mixing up glaze medium, water, and ink. And you can see here I'm just bringing it up onto the white uh, ceramic palette and I pull this extra ink in and what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a glaze consistency so that's that's a lot of pigment but you can see if as I thin it out if I take some off my brush you know that's what I'm looking for right there and so I am just going to I'm not going to worry too much about getting it on the packs or anything I'm going to try to stay away from the um, I'm going to try to stay away from the oh, this is good I think I will Point you guys a little bit forward. How's that? There we go. And perfect. Uh, just checking the stream here. And that's too far. All right. Oh, I had it. That looks good. Okay. And yeah, that's fine. All right. So I'm going to just start, I'm going to start glazing from the bottom up and this looks nice and light and it looks like a mess and that's fine. Um, I'm going to do a bunch of layers. I'm going to keep it off the muzzle as best I can. I don't think I'm going to be able to observe the eyes. I'll have to go back and go around the eyes with a, a white glaze. Um, and what I found is 
The nice thing about the inks are I can just slop it on and this isn't museum quality, this isn't uh, golden demon quality or you know, golden brush quality, but good board game quality, nice and fast. These guys are good for, there's a little piece of flash here I don't like. This will also be great for D&D, &D, fantasy games, um, you know. Even the frozen planet of Hoth has pack mules on it, I'm sure, or their version of it. So, you know, a sci-fi world that isn't Star Wars could still have pack mules with these generic packages on them. And, uh, there we go. And what I'm going to do is I will do a code on this one, code on the next one, just jump back and forth. And see how it goes. So there we go. And that's good. And so I don't really like the Oh, I like a little bit of flash right here in his forehead. There it goes. Oh, sorry about the rattling. That's my tool drawer where I keep my knife and my filler and my sandpaper and all that stuff. And again, there's another, another spot on the back of his ears. I clean these, but white figures that are pre-primed, that's the downside of WizKid pre-primed figures. A lot of this flash until you... So you put the first bump of paint on it, you don't really see it. And that's kind of the trick, right? Looks great in the package in the store until you start painting it and you're like, holy cow, this has got a lot of flash on it. And I grabbed a little too much glaze. And one of the things you want to do with glazing is you don't want to be laying a ton of uh, fluid down. You kind of want to let you know a little bit of fluid carry the little bit of pigment. And in this case, I'm not doing a true paint glazing technique. Uh, high-end version. I am really just doing an ink wash. Works mainly over white. Uh, on my horses, I xenophil them, but because these donkeys have uh, one of the option when I uh, looked at them, I wanted the option to make them lighter as they go down. I left them white, and in hindsight, after I started looking at them and looking at the reference photos, I found that dark legs were more to my liking. I could have xenophil primed these, and they'd been fine. Um, Oh, look, someone just joined us. Hello. I don't get many uh, viewers, so feel free to say hi in chat. I don't have a lot of the high-end streaming tools open, so unless you say hi, I'm not going to know who it is. I just have a tablet next to my painting table showing me the stream. So, If you just want to lurk, that's fine. You can listen to me ramble on about painting mules and doing ink washes. So... Uh, I'm excited about these figures though. There's a lot of details I'm going to be able to pick out. I'm going to use some glazes and some washes and this might just be a nice experiment. They're not for an army. It's a nice quick project. I, I was looking at the prospects of TV. Uh, I was looking at other big painting projects I had to do and I thought, you know, something with mass appeal like these mules that are good for any kind of game might be worth watching. It might be fun. It's light. I wouldn't have to worry too much and I could get it done and an hour or two and uh, try some new techniques. So if you're thinking about painting something new, trying a new technique, grab some figures you're not you know, too worried about. A uh, sample figure, grab some old figures out of your bin that you don't like, uh, some dead lad, or like this, a, a one-off project, some pack mules, a piece of terrain, uh, a, a, some civilians. Um, they're always good for all sorts of games. So, and that's pretty good. I'm liking that. That feels like that's pretty good. I'm just going to thin that out. All right, so that first coat is. 
pretty good. I'm not unhappy with it. We'll uh, wrap the first one and do another coat. So, let's see here. I'm going to try to stick some way in the back here. There we go. The nice thing about this ink glazing is it just builds up and builds up. And then all of a sudden you look up and you go, hey, I did something. It looks good. Uh, it looks worse before it gets better, that's for sure. But, and it's just layer upon layer. And you can see I'm not so far. I haven't taken any care and do anything crazy with layering. So... This is building up in some of the recesses, and that's fine. I'm not really looking for a, you know, a wash look yet. So I'm going to go in here and dry my brush off and take some of this off of the low spots. I'm not quite looking for that yet. There we go. And there we go. All right, I'll put a second coat on both of these and then I'm going to up my ink intensity a little bit. Let's try to, it's just building up the base, getting the figures wet. And at this point, it's almost a wet blend on the figures. So I'm not waiting for anything to dry. I'm just trying to build up that, that ink intensity little by little. There we go. Get his ears. A little bit of pig a little bit more pigment in his ears. There we go. And that's fine. Great. Okay. Next up, another, another dose of ink. So we're going to pump up the intensity. Just mix that in. Again, I still have, you know, 10 parts glaze medium, 10 parts water. And at this point, maybe one part ink. I started off with just a drop of ink, and uh, now I've got a couple of brushfuls, so I'll start to dab this on a little more. And again, I'm still, I'm not worrying about blotchiness, I'm not worrying about, you know, getting it right. This is still just building up layers of intensity, and this is the cheap, poor man's quick ink glaze. And in a few layers, I'll start doing more on the bottom of the horse. In fact, I'm going to start dragging my ink down the horse. That way, more pigment will be deposited at the bottom. Because more liquid will be at the bottom. I'm still doing an ink glaze. I'm not doing an actual real glaze. I'm letting the ink do the work. And I'm putting a lot on. Not a super dry brush. There we go. There we go. Okay. Looks good. Uh, ears. Try to stay away from that muzzle as best I can. starting to build up it's starting to dry that's looking good a 
this is a sepia ink. A lot of mules are very chestnutty. They're very reddish. And so that's why I chose the sepia. And uh, I think it'll look good once I get it dark. As I get down a little bit further, I will add a little black to it so I can darken up the lower black ink. If I was going to add uh, paint, I'd go with you know dark gray, charcoal gray. But with the ink technique, I'm going to go black, and then the last layers will be paint washes that will, or paint uh, glazes that will actually finalize my tones and pick everything out. So that looks good. This one needs uh, another coat of the dark. There we go. And again, this is seems like a lot, but painting horses, if you're going to do it right and shade them, is it's a lot of work and getting everything in the nooks and crannies. Nice thing we're going to Thing about the ink washes it's thin it goes everywhere so you know you don't have to worry about getting the undersides of things and getting paint in the notches where it belongs it's gonna go everywhere the ink is and I've been really happy with some of the horses I've done this way I don't see any reason why donkeys wouldn't be the same so there we go he's starting to darken up and again, I'm going to just let them dry a little bit and then pull a little bit of that off where it's puddling. I don't want it to puddle up. This isn't a wash. This is a glaze. So go in here and grab the big chunks that are, you know, highlighting stuff. I'm not really ready for that yet. There we go. I'm also just redistributing this, doing a little wet blending on it. So here's a good example. Right here is a big chunk. I don't want that pool there. Not at all. I don't want that pool there. I do like how this is lighter to darker on the muzzle. I did a pretty good job of keeping away from this and drawing away from it, so I'm not unhappy with that. Check this one. This muzzle is also staying kind of light, which is good. So that's I'm happy with that. I'd like a little more pigment on the ears, so I'm going to give them a little, little extra on that. Actually, let it sit there a little bit and drag it away from this reins and stuff here. A zenithal would have helped me a lot on these. I hindsight 2020. If I'd have known I was going to do the dark ones, I definitely could have benefited from it. I'm not super happy with the back of this guy's leg right here. It's got a little bit of flash. And this is going to mess up my painting a little bit, but I'm going to hate myself a lot less later. i that flash off that figure, and if I have to stare at it, the rest of this figure's uh, lifetime with me. And I think I can, yeah, that's better. Again, I didn't even see that piece until the third pass through the figure, so. There we go. And again, so far he looks just like, really like he's been, like a bunch of ink's been slapped on it. Doesn't look all that super fantastic, but I promise you in a couple more passes, it, all of a sudden, like day and night, it'll start to look different. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a touch of black ink. Just grabbing that, sorry. Just a touch of... This is just regular old speedball black ink. Any water soluble ink will do. And I'm going to add the slightest touch of it, if I can get the container open, to my mix here. I still have room for more sepia in my mix. Um, but uh, that's going to get my fingers all black. Nice. That was brilliant. Nice job. And we'll see that for the rest of the stream. Okay, so I'm just going to take the ever slightest touch of this. Yeah, that's more than I wanted, so I'm going to scrape off every bit of liquid I can. And try to get as much of this ink off my hand as I can. That's better. Yeah. 
All right. So I've got a tiny bit of ink in this. And now I've made this a black brown. And I'm going to wash this brush off and get all the other black out of it. Okay. And I'm going to put it on the figure. Just look. Yeah, see, so that's much more chocolatey now. And we'll give this another try. Again, we'll start on the bottom here. Another layer. Now, mules have some gray in them, so that's why I was happy with the black. If uh, you're doing horses, you'd want to just keep pumping up the, the gray. And uh, I got a piece of something on this. There it goes. You'd want to just keep pumping up the, uh, the brown but I want this to be a little more of a, a grayish brown, so I went with the black. And what I'll do is I'll highlight the browns with my final, uh, final highlighting. What I tend to do is I do a quick dry brush of the figure with a light brown. That shows me where the rains are, and it gives me a little bit of texture. And then I go back and do my glazing and my actual real highlighting, and that. It covers up most of the dry brushing so it doesn't look like you just dry brush the horse. Um, but the dry brushing kind of adds a little bit of, uh, you know, texture highlighting or, you know, muscle highlighting. So there we go. Giving this guy a little bit of, a little bit more color. And again, I'm still not worried about the splotchiness or the pooling. I'll drag some of that off before the figure's totally dry, but I'm just trying to get the ink on here and get the colors up. There we go. So, not bad. I'm going to dry off my brush and then just come back here and pull it out of the, the recesses. I don't want to over highlight any of these recesses yet. I'm actually not too bad with it pooling next to these reins, provided um, it's just in the, the reins. Like, I don't want a big pool on the skin. But that'll give me kind of some faux black lining eventually on these when I paint them. And that's fine with me. All right, there we go. That guy's getting close to being able to go to paint. Maybe one more layer. much to say as I layer this on just layer after layer peeling away from the best I can from the nose again still getting some smears that's fine this, this model actually has a little bit of hair texture going down correct pattern here that's kind of nice that's been accentuated by the ink and my brush strokes but I'm kind of okay with that because it looks pretty cool and these are kind of hairy animals mules have a have a lot of varieties that have long, more scraggly hair. Some of them are slick coat, but from the pictures I saw on the internet, but some of them are more like donkeys, you know, because that's what it is. Half donkey, half horse. So, or half, or donkeys, half mule, and half horse, or something like that. It was all related, that's what I mean. False information here on AJ's stream, there you go. I don't know what it is, I'll make it up. So, looks good. Alright, so he's getting kind of darker. I'm kind of liking him. I'll dry off the brush. Let's see what it looks like. So, this is not bad. He's almost halfway there this is some of the mules are this light but i want mine to be the brown variety so we're going to go a little darker i'm going to just keep 
keeping the pools off. I don't want it to be looking like a wash yet. There we go. Uh, that's not bad. I don't mind a little extra in the tail. That's going to end up black anyways. I'm not going to worry about collecting it off there. It's just more work. But yeah, that's, not, that's pretty good. So, this looks pretty good here. So, that's all the black I want in here. But now I'm going to add another dose of brown. I don't want it to be any more gray, but I do want a little more brown. So, I have a chocolate brown ink somewhere. I uh, can dig out if this doesn't end up being the sepia doesn't end up being dark enough, but the nice thing about the sepia is it's reddish. Another thing I might do is I might just add some chestnut paint for the final glazing. And once I start putting paint in it, I've got to really glaze like paint. I can't, I can't just slop it on here. I've got to be a little more careful. The nice thing about the ink glazes is they are very forgiving. Alrighty. And the ink glazes, other than the glaze medium, have uh, very uh, very little body to them. It's not like I'm clogging up detail. You can see this is this water thin. And if I go over a zenithal, I don't even use the glaze medium. I, I can sometimes do this in two coats and I don't worry about disturbing the previous coats. And uh, you can do it very quick on horses if you zenithal highlight and you know what you want. I've been known to do you know, one coat of sepia on all the horses. And I go to do a second coat of sepia, and I do two horses, add a you know, toothpick tip full of black ink, do two more horses that are a little darker, toothpick a couple more a little darker, and when I get to the end, I've got a couple horses that are very dark brown, and I add a few more drops, and I go back and I do the muzzles and the manes, and oh, there's a mistake. I grabbed a little bit too much ink on that nose, so this is the nice thing is it's forgivable. Uh, go back in while it's still wet and pull it back off and that's better but yeah so you know in you know four passes you know, well, uh, sorry two passes of sepia and a you know, color pass like that and then a final pass for the manes and tails and you can do nice chestnut horses in varying colors and unit and you can do you know a dozen to 16 horses in 30 minutes uh, you know maybe another 30 minutes to pick out all the bridles and the horse tack and the, um, the bits and the mouths and stuff, but you know, it's not bad. Okay, so I've got that darker color on there. Before I wipe that off, I'm going to let that set while I do this one. I'm going to go back and take the puddles off, and that will let that ink really bite into the figure, brown it up. So. There we go, and underbelly, and I am going to do that black um, trick when we get down to the end of these to darken up the, the lower halves of these, the legs, bottom halves of the legs get nice and dark on these mules, and, uh, and then the, the muzzles I'm not going to do because the muzzles on the, on the mules are, are lighter, so they won't but get it, but if it was a horse they would also get the, the muzzles and uh, the mains. And I'll grab a slightly lighter, uh, a slight, slightly smaller brush to do the, the mains. I could do it with this, but this is my bang around brush that has a big fat tip, and so it's not for detail work. I know it's going to be scrubbing at the figure, and I didn't want to damage a good brush, so I, uh, a little rough and tumble with this one a little more than I would be with a nice, so it's, it has no tip. I can't can't use it, but I've got plenty of other brushes that are fine. There we go. Okay, as promised, we'll go back to this one and pull off the pools, give it a kind of a, a smooth. By the time the brush loads up, I'll take it off. Draw it away from that head. Nice. All 
Okay, so right now I'm getting brush strokes all over the figure and in the ink and the glaze and those are going to come out in a little bit. So I don't have to worry too much about those. In fact, you notice that as I drag this brush, because it's an ink, you get these nice brush strokes. If you just wait in front of your eyes, you can see a lot of them just melt away because the ink flows. So what's nice about this is it's very forgiving. And uh, a lot of this texture that you see here is actually in the figure. It has a, a hairy texture because it's a mule. All right, and then same thing, go back through this guy and make sure that I don't have any big puddles or clops. There we go. <clears throat> nice. All right, so it's not the final color I want, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding a little dark and start doing the lower half of the donkey and get the shades in I want. Because I'm still going to come over here with a with a with a wash. I mean, not a wash. A yeah, um, some paint glazes. That'll give my me the opacity. That's going to get rid of the brush strokes, and uh, tie the whole model together. Uh, so, but I want to get the darkness on the bottom of the model. So back into the black. This time I'm going to get some in this pot here to use because I'm going to add it in a touch at a time. Each pass is going to get another little dollop and so instead of opening up that jar every time I'm just going to draw from this other well. Okay so that's enough. Mix it in. Yeah, so that's getting very dark, very black. And now we're just going, basically from the little above the knee, I'm going to drag that down. Not all of this is going to stay. I'm going to ink it up a little bit and then I'll come back and pull it out. So there's a side benefit of also giving me free hooves. There's this pool at the bottom is going to sit right on the hoof. And hooves aren't black, but this isn't going to actually end up black. It's going to be end up dark brown. And that's perfect for hooves. So there we go. And that's actually it's looking pretty good. So I'm going to go up a little further because I think I can go a little darker. This will blend a little better. And as it flows. Yeah, that's not bad. Let that set. Grab another bit. Learn my lesson here. I'm going to go up a little higher, same as I did on the other one. There we go. Knees up. Yeah, no, sorry, from the knees down rather. There we go. What I'll do is when I go back to the first figure after the ink set, I'll drag a lot of it down, and then when there's just a tiny bit, I'll wet blend this junction because right now it's very stark right here. Right, it's I didn't you know, I didn't really worry too much about the line. And there we go. So I'm gonna clean the brush off. And then most of this will come down like that. I'll clean my brush off, I'll wet it. I'll clean it off again so it's just slightly damp. Now I can pull this up. You can see how that ink that ink is very water soluble, and you know this is kind of a or almost an eraser up here. It takes all the pigment off. In fact, you can see that if I wanted to, 
make those muzzles a little cleaner, I could you know, go back and with water clean off what I got there. Actually, I think I will. That's kind of nice around the eyes, too. Again, uh, I'm going to get the ink on the brush, take it all off so that I don't have a water brush, but an ink brush. Draw, it's dry now, though. Draw that down. There we go. Not bad. And then another drop of black. And then this one is going to be real close to the bottom of the foot. So you can see that this is now pretty much black. And now we'll just get the bottom sock and the hoof. There we go. And I'm going to get the inside of these ears a little bit because the donkey's ears, actually I'm going to do the whole ear. The donkey's ears tend to be the grayer part. So I'll get a little gray on those ears. And I'm not going to do the mane. That's a straight black. I'm going to do that in a second with a straight black ink. And there we go. There we go. Nice. All right, and then the, the ears, give them a little donkey ear action, a little dark gray. We'll lighten that up with a tiny bit of light gray and make, make it look like old man gray, old donkey man gray. I just want to darken that up and give it a black tone, especially there's less fur there and you see more of the dark skin underneath. Um, there we go. Okay. So while that dries a little bit, we may go in with another coat of brown, depending on how I feel, or we might just glaze it. But while that dries, we're going to take a, a nice brush. And this is just an Army Painter base coating brush. I'm not a brush. Uh, I haven't invested a ton of money in brushes. I've looked into some Winter Newton Series 7 and some, some uh, other more respected brands. But I'm a little rough on my brushes. I haven't dared spend a lot of money on a brush yet, so you know, Army Painter is about the highest quality I get. All right, so now I'm going in with the base coating brush with straight black ink. And I'm being careful not to get all the way up against everything. I'm going to let the ink flow into that crack between the tail and the rest of the body. And if I don't get it all, that's fine. I'm going to go back through here. I'm going to have some black paint. At some point when I do this, and I'm going to do some more detail work on this because the main is right now is straight black. It's a little too dark. I'm going to add some gray highlights and some, you know, some sheen to it, some fake sheen with some lighter colors. So, uh, what I really don't want to do is I don't want to get this brush up against that wet brown ink because it will hit it and just run right over the mall a muck and running a muck is not what I want there we go and then the underside here a kind of a theory I try to get the underside of stuff you know if, if I can tilt the model up and get to it I will if I find that I've torn the model three times and I can't really see it well these are tabletop models for gaming they're not for you know, painting contest or museum display. If I can't see it turning the model upside down, no one gaming is ever going to see it. So that tail's not bad. I'm going to probably let it be. I think if I go any tighter to this, I'm going to regret it. I think I can go a little tighter right there. All right. So that's not bad. And 
I'm going to come in here and just give the hoofs any time, any place where I think the hoof isn't quite black enough. I'm going to just give it a little bit of black. It'll mix in with the brown. The bottoms for sure. Yeah, that looks good. I'm kind of liking the, the brush strokes in this, the, the, the hairy donkey brush strokes. I'm kind of liking. All right, so this mane. Again, I'm going to try to not get too close to the brown. Nice thing about this black is it will, it will cover a myriad of sins. So if I get a little bit of my washes up onto the main, once it's black, no problem. And any washes or glazes that I put near it, I got to fill that crack and give me some free black lining. So I don't need to get this right up against the body. One of the things that makes paint look sloppy is if you get one color paint, like in this case the dark black, onto that brown surface, um, if it's somewhere it doesn't belong, your eye is going to pick that up as that's wrong. And if the light color, like right here, I've got a couple of these little spots here that are showing. If the light color is intruding into the black, it's a lot less uh, visually... Uh, stark and your brain doesn't really pick it up and so you should always err on the side of you know not getting stuff onto flat surfaces and I'm trying to figure out I'm going to kind of, I guess I'm going to have to invent where this forelock goes I, I'm cleaning up the figure it kind of got a little bit mangled so I'm just going to paint it as best I can now Horse eyes, and I'm, I'm going to pretend donkey eyes are the same, although I don't, didn't do my research. They're black. There's no whites of the eyes. And so I'm going to come in here right now and just put a little black here. It's more than I need. I'm going to have to fix it up. But I'm going to put the inside of the black in now. And then when I start mixing my glaze colors, at some point I'll take the, the full color glaze, you know, the full color paint for whatever glaze I'm using, and I'll define this eyelid and I'll I'll turn that you know big blob of black I've got there into a slit and it'll look pretty good. You know, this figure has a pretty pronounced eyebrow bone right here. Um, I could have left it out but you know I, I think you'd be surprised how often a nice black eye on a horse if it's not a big blob like this but if you actually cut it in and and make it look like a nice defined eyeball you'd be surprised how much life that gives to the horse uh, and how much better the horse looks with just an eye on it. Uh, and you don't have to paint pupils, you don't have to paint colors, you don't have to get crazy about it. It's pretty easy. Alright, so that's one guy done. Kind of happy with him. I still got to go back and the main coat is not even close to done, but I'm just letting that dry a little bit while I do the, the manes and the hooves. And, uh, and we'll go back in with another coat of overall color. Uh, let's see, I think I'd like to start with hooves because they're the most forgiving. If I have a little too much paint on my, or ink in this case, on my brush, it's fine. One of the things many painters, I think new many painters, don't do, I don't know why many painters, even experienced ones, experienced ones don't do, is they don't consider inks. Inks are fantastic. And I'm not saying you can print a, paint a whole model with it. I mean, this model is going to need some paint too. Um, and I'm not saying that it's a very controllable medium, but when you're talking about big areas, another place inks are really good with is whites. This is uh, Liquitex acrylic opaque white, and you'd be surprised how well that covers where it was. A lot of white paints don't, or they get really chalky and clumpy when they're covering, and ink doesn't. There's a lot of pigment in inks. They last a long time. You don't use much of it. The brush stays wet. You don't have to worry about a wet palette. There's a bunch of things that's great about inks. Uh, they flow nice. Right. And you can see that this ink is covering, you know, black covers well anyways, but it's covering, you know, pretty much one shot. It is a little transparent. In this case, I am okay with that. I'm happy with that. Yeah. You know, this is an organic being. It's a horse or a donkey uh, or a mule in this case. It's uh, nothing's perfect on it. You know, you look at your own 
Show your own body in the mirror. Nothing's perfect on it. You look at you know, a supermodel or Tom Brady or, or uh, Samuel Jackson. Nobody's perfect. You know, even the pretty people have got flaws. And Kirk Douglas had that giant dimple on his chin, and everybody turned that into a sex symbol. It wasn't, you know, I guess that's a thing, but, you know, turned a flaw into a sex symbol. People aren't perfect. Horses aren't perfect. Your paint job should have flaws. In fact, the best painters, and I'm not one of them, the best painters will go back through and add flaws if something looks too perfect. You know, when they paint them, uh, you know, when you paint a tank, they'll go back and add some chipping and some battle damage. You paint a mech, the same thing, some scratches and dings. Dust is a great tool. I use dust on my tanks a lot, and it it turns a very easy block paint paint job, and you throw some dust pigments on it, and it looks fantastic. I got a bunch of friends that are tankers or ex-tankers or in the army, and the first thing that they'll tell you is, no tank leaves the yard not covered in dust. You can wash a tank, let it dry, wipe it down, drive it off the lot, and it's covered in dust. It's, uh, in there. They, grab, they, uh, they knock up dust. They a big giant tractor. With, you know, tons and tons of armor. A lot of, a lot of energy goes into grinding up whatever's underneath it. Even a, even a tank on a road is going to knock up all the dust. It's going to ride not where the cars ride. It's going to ride on the edges where all the dirt is. Because it's wider than a car. There's no such thing as a clean tank. So, you see them in museums all the time. But if you're doing tanks for... Now, if you're doing a tank for a model, static model, you know, that's fine. But if you're doing tanks for a war game, they're going to be out fighting the enemy. They're going to be covered in dust. It's just the way it is. So, there's a lot of the MIG pigments. I like them a lot. But there's a lot of companies that make good pigments. Now, I'm in, I'm in serious trouble here. I got a little too much ink right there, and then I'm in danger of that creeping in. So I'm going to tilt the model upside down, dry my brush off, and try to wick off as much of that as I can. Now, it hasn't, hasn't gone where it doesn't belong yet, but I'm going to take all that ink and draw it away from there and use it, because if I'd left it there and turned the model right side up, it would have caused me a little trouble. All right. So he's looking pretty good. Black's in the right places. The hooves are dark enough. Uh, the legs are suitably gray. You know, horse color is just a little bit, a touch light. And same thing with this one. The horse color is just a touch light. So I think what I want to do is clean my brush. Get my big brush back out. Or actually, I think I'm going to get a medium brush. And I'm going to mix up some ink, I mean some uh, paint glazes. I think I'm done with the inks. I, uh, I'm going to... I think I'm going to take one second, I'm going to dry these off with a hair dryer, so I'm going to step aside, actually a heat gun. You know, hear, hear a little noise in the background, you're going to see a blank screen, but I'll be right back. Sorry about your ears. Again, the heat gun's drying the glaze medium, this glaze medium here. Um, it's, the ink will dry, but it'll rehydrate. The glaze medium will actually polarize, and that is what's going to keep them from spreading that ink around. <clears throat> if you just want to use inks and you don't want to go back with anything else, and you will let them dry a couple days, you can just do straight ink <clears throat> and water. In this case, I'm going to do these on stream, and yeah, that's dry. After that, I'm going to start mixing up my, my chestnut horse color. So for chestnut horses, I'm a big fan of mahogany brown and uh, and I like this. Uh, so this is Vallejo model color mahogany sand. Uh, and I'm a big fan of uh, dark sienna, heavy sienna, which is essentially a browner version of that. 
This is extra opaques. This is the game color um, uh, extra pigment line. It's, it kind of they kind of have the similar amount of pigment to scale 75. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put. I'm going to start out with this. This is my darker color, and then I'm going to highlight it with the mahogany sand, uh, or possibly. Mahogany sand or something else. So I'll just leave these out here so you can see them. Uh, and I'll get some glaze medium. Nice amount of that. And now I'm going to start glazing. So I'm going to glaze with a nice number two FlexiFile brush made in Germany. They're sable brushes. These I like for a nice moderately priced brush. I like these a lot. So I'm going to grab just a, just a touch of the pigment. Get it in here and you know, that's about right, but it's not as red as I want it. And so I think I'm going to go with a little bit of red leather and add a little bit of that. And if that doesn't do it, I might actually finally end up with cavalry brown, but that may be too red. So let's see how the red leather works. Yeah, yeah, I like that a lot. All right, and that glaze is, it's a little thick. Add a little medium. As far as thick, I mean, it's got a little too much pigment. So we're going to thin that out just a little bit. This is the nice thing about using a ceramic uh, palette. And I just got this one off of uh, the Great God Amazon. It's got you know a bunch of trays in it. It cleans up nicely. I have a wet palette, and I could blend on that too. But this is nice. I can see the consistency of the of the, uh, the glaze. All right, so I'll load the brush up, and then I'm going to wick all the water off and start glazing. So again, I'm gonna draw away from here, and this is gonna. tie in those colors and it adds a little bit of opaque pigment. Oops, I got in the black ink there. That's going to that's going to make my life miserable. So I laid that black ink in nice and thick and I didn't really glaze it, so it's it's problematic. I just want to stay away from that. So that's what I meant about getting too close with the black ink. So I'll start glazing, and that's too much water. Dry the brush off. This is a very slow, very subtle process. I don't do it hardly as well as a lot of other people, but I'm learning. That's why I'm trying it on these guys. I wanted to give it a shot. I usually just do the ink wash on the zenithal and then uh, I don't use the glaze medium I just go back with thin paints but this is fine yeah I'm liking that that looks good looks good and on this back leg somehow oh this is the one that had the, the issue I'm gonna give that a little more love yeah, this isn't bad. Okay. Let's see here. That's way too much fluid. I'll pull that out of there. All right, now I'm going to try to have this glaze drop down onto the black. There we go. And glaze these ears again. A little more brown onto that. There we go. And I mentioned these eyes, so I think I'm going to take a mix of these two colors. I'm going to mix it up into the color that I've got in in here, straight. And here's where I'm going to define that eye, and this is going to make a an eyebrow here, and it's going to be stark. Go. There we go. 
so I've hidden a lot of that. Black eye. There we go. And so this one I've got a little bit underneath too because this eye socket was kind of problematic. So there we go. So now I just know when I glaze away a little bit of that starkness. So I'll take my glaze back and blend this out. Blend that out. There we go. Take a lot of that out of here now. There we go. Same thing here. In fact, that's there we go. Nice. Pretty heavy for a paint glaze, but it's only the first layer. I'm just trying to get some opaque pigment on top of that ink. And the next layer I'll go much lighter. Oh, I forgot to do the eyeballs. So luckily I've got some of this black ink left. Now I glue my figures on, on these uh, soda caps and unlike a lot of painters who are always putting their brushes on their thumbs I can do it right here on the, the bottle cap and because it's you know it's my figure holder and you get one free on every soda as a war gamer I need a lot more than one or two I do I'm only doing two donkeys tonight but Often I'm doing you know, 12, 24, sometimes 36 figures at a time. And so instead of two figures here, I've got rows and rows and I'm uh, you know, doing one, one pass on each one. And instead of doing glazing, I'll be doing you know, hooves on every horse, put it down, hooves on every horse, put it down. And uh, you can see how Having figure holders that are inexpensive or free are, is a good thing. So I laid that eyeball in with a, with a very small brush, and so I don't think I'm going to have to get as crazy with the, the eyebrows on these guys. Although it doesn't hurt, even though horses don't have eyebrows, I can tell you that humans map themselves onto all sorts of situations and having a darker area on the eyebrow will not cause anyone any mental anguish when they look at the figure. In fact, they'll go, well, let's go look at a horse. Um, so again, this, uh, this glaze here, I'm starting to work in and try to even out the brush strokes, uh, even out the colors, the pigments, spreading them around a little bit. And I'm adding some opacity because I've got paint in here now. And it's hiding a lot of sins. I'm starting to pay attention to the brush strokes now and where they're where they're laying. And on this horse or mule, I'm trying to get all the brush strokes to go vertically. Because that's the way the hair is molded in, and that's also the way the hair grows naturally. And if I end up with a brush stroke here or there, but it's going in the right direction, it'll look intentional. It'll look correct. That won't be a problem. What will be a problem is that pool of material there. I'm gonna get rid of that. Yeah, this is starting to starting to be pleased with the progress on this one. Uh, sorry, I just went out of frame there for a second. I had to just my back my sitting position get a little more ooh that's way too much pigment there we go so that's looking good so 
I like the gray on the lower legs of these. It's they're starting to get that donkey look. That gray bottom of the leg. I'm not super excited about the amount of color I've got up on the top of this. So I'm going to actually mix up a more pigmented, darker glaze. I'm going to lay that in here. Got it in a separate cup here. Didn't mix up a lot of it. I'm going to use it fairly, fairly quickly. It's a little redder. And I'm fine with that. There we go, and I'll do a couple passes of that. The same thing up here, although here, there's a saddle in here, or a harness, that's gonna get some, some leather. So I'm not too worried about that. There's a little pooling up underneath it. I don't really want that. So I think I'm just gonna stick with this. I am gonna use a little bit of that pigmented here. I'll pull this out of here. There we go. There we go, liking that. I got a tide mark right there. I want to get rid of that. No, actually, it's not a tide mark, it's a defect in the figure. Whatever it is, I'm going to try to get rid of it. I mean, wash did, uh, or ink didn't lay in there because there was a defect in the figure. All right, that's pretty good. Liking him okay. All right. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that wash sit there, or that uh, glaze sit there. I'm going to pick out a paint, grab a grab a color, start looking at some of these packs. I'm going to block in a couple packs, come back and do a layer of glaze, let them dry. Block in a couple of packs, and uh, I'm going to use a. Uh, I'm going to use some rough and tumble uh, block painting, dry brushing, and washing on the, the accoutrements. Um, because I think that will be fun and effective. And These are just tokens. In the saga, they're, they're objective markers or you know, things for the soldiers to fight over. So, I'll start out with... I'm going to grab a couple of my favorite leather colors. So here's a... German camo orange ochre. It's a nice kind of you know greenish ochre. I'm gonna use that. I'll put these colors back. Uh, um, grabbing things that are I like earthy tones. Uh, I'm gonna grab a couple of browns, of course. So here's a cork brown, and of course flat earth from Vallejo. Those are all great colors. Uh, and then I need to grab something, you know, one or two that are colorful. And so I'm going to go with uh, Azul Profundo Deep Blue from Scale Color, SC55. It's a super dark blue. Um, and then I'm going to go with, you know, you need a green. And I'm going to go with, let's see here, this here, Highlight Russian 2 Tank 330. I... It's funny, when I'm doing Medievals and Ancients, I use a lot of camo colors, World War II camo colors, because a lot of the inks are earth-based, they're faded, you want them to be light. And if you don't put them all together in a camo pattern, and you know, your, your brain doesn't really say, hey, that's camo. You know, only when it's on a tank does this look like, or a, you know, a German piece of uh, a mortar or a gun, does this look like Dunkel Gelb otherwise. It's just a really nice tan. And if you do World War II armor, why not? I also don't overlook using these colors on your science fiction. So I'm going to make this big pack down here, this ochre color. And I thin it out a little bit. It's a little thick. There we go. That's better. I'm probably going to get a, a lighter color for the other pack, the big pack on the other side. This is fairly dark. Figure that. What are these going to be? They're going to be cheap, inexpensive canvas. 
you know, whatever they had in town that they wanted to wrap this thing in. The thing that's in it is the important thing. What they're wrapping it with is to protect it. The other thing I'll do at the end is I'm going to spatter up some mud and some dirt on the, the bottoms of them so that they look good. And uh, can look like they've been, you know, on the back of a mule for a trip. All right. And again, I slap that in. It's a little foamed up a little bit. I'm going to make sure that it's not terrible. These are pre-primed, but the uh, primer is not great. I probably should have primed them ahead of time. Even if I didn't Zenithil, another coat of regular primer would have been okay. All right, again, that's just block painted. Happy with that. And I'm not going to do, you know, the same pack on the same mule, but I'm going to probably pick, like, how about this one up here? This looks good. I want to use these colors a couple times if I can. You know, if someone was doling out cloth to bag up stuff at a town, it's not out of the realm of possibility that a bunch of them would be the same color. I'm going to get one of my colors out that's a linen and I'm going to do a bunch of things on each mule in that. So that may be what I do next. I'm going to fill in. So sorry, I took it off camera for you. kind of gloopy. I don't know if that's the primer. Oh, okay, it's not the paint. The paint's thin enough. It's just the primer had some chunks in it. I'm glad I painted that not, oh, not orange. The thing looks like a pumpkin. All right, so before I do too far with the other colors, Let's get a linen color. How about Mojave White? That's pretty white. So I'm going to put a little Mojave White in here. And that is the color of linen, but on a figure that's too white. So I'm going to add just a touch of that camo ochre. And there we go. That gives it a little, a little color, a little water, a little more water. Yeah, now you can see that 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 color against the the pure white of the palette <clears throat> looks very, very tan. But when we put it on these figures, <clears throat> it will look very white. That's one thing that you need to do is never use white. White is uh, very rarely found in the world, the, well, the warring world, um, except dress uniforms. And it's a great color to highlight, to use for reflections. And it's a great tool, but if you want to paint something white, it's always a warm white which is what this is here. This is very warm because I put a lot of warm in it, but Mojave is a warm white. Or cold white. For a cold white, I like this uh, silver gray. It's a tip I got from my uncle. That's a, you can see that that's a, there's a swatch of it. I put a swatch on the, the tip of each print. That's very dark compared to the white of the primer, but on a figure, if there's no pure white on the figure, that will also look, and that's a cold, a cold off white. And uh, you can make gradients of it just by adding white. You can use that to lighten things up instead of lightening up with white, and it will desaturate it uh, on the white side, um, which is nice. I'm going to be careful here. I only want to do one pass over this because there's, uh, there's ink here that's most likely going to rehydrate. So I will let this dry, and once the paint's dry, I come back and do a second coat. All right, this is good. 
This is good. Happy with that. All right, I'm gonna thin that paint out just a little bit more. And that's good. I'm gonna do both big packs on this one, this tan color, and I'm gonna do the other big pack on the other, other mule, this tan color. This linen, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna make a lot of linen bags on these because someone in town packed this mule and they grabbed all the linen they had and well, the same color. There we go. Using this big giant brush. Like I said, I'm not super gentle on my brushes, so I don't have a lot of really expensive brushes. Got some average quality brushes, a bunch of them. I try to keep you know one or two good ones with really nice points, and the worse they get, the more uh, mundane tasks I assign to them. So. Go. That looks good. Happy with that. I'm probably going to come back in here with a uh, some kind of wash to pull all these wrinkles out, uh, and uh, that's going to fill in these cracks. But I do want to get these pretty close to each other. And again, dark color, light color. I don't want to bring this light color up onto the dark color because of the contrast. Um, this is, you kind of get a feel for it. This is exactly the opposite of the main where I did want to get the light color in the dark. Um, there we go. Happy with that. Checking for any bubbles, checking for any places I missed badly. Yeah. Okay. Two tan packs like that a lot. I think that's going to be a colored, that's going to be colored, that's going to be colored. And I want that to be brown, so I think I'm good with a tan on that one. And on this one, I think what I'll do is I will do the rest of the tan on this, and before I put another color on my palette, I'll go back and do another glaze on the, the bodies of the mules. This should be dry by now. And uh, maybe pretty close to getting done with that. One or two more glazes, and I will be happy with the way the mules look. Go. Nice. And again, I think I'm going to have to go over all of this tan on both because some of it has reactivated the inks. And because I'm doing this all in my shot, normally I would ink the horses, go on to something else, come back, you know, maybe next painting session or an hour later. And, uh, Inks dry kind of slowly, but I would come back and, after they've all set up, do my painting. That's, uh, that's a tip for you if you do use inks, you know, give them some time to dry. The other thing you do with inks is if you want them to set after they've dried for a day, you can hit the whole model with uh, some, you know, some dull coats and matte varnish. I like just spray dull coat. A light dusting of spray dull coat will fix everything in place and make everything permanent won't add any real volume to the, you know, won't hide any detail, won't clog anything, but now your inks won't walk around on you. And the nice thing is this dull coat, because it's matte, gives you a really nice painting surface. So it's it's not like other finishes where once you top coat it, you can't. All right, I'm gonna do this piece right here, also in this linen. I like this 
and then we'll go back and glaze again and then I'll finish up the base coating of all the boxes and crates packages bundles And then they got to go, the, the dread of these is going to be doing all these straps. And I got a trick for that. I'm going to try, hopefully that will work, make it a tiny bit easier. It's still going to be a lot of work, but I'm hoping to try to make it not too much of a nightmare. There we go. Nice. Okay, so I want to go back over these and do another coat, and I'm going to use a, a William Alexander quote. He's the guy who taught Bob Ross how to paint. By the way, if you like Bob Ross, go watch William Alexander. He's a, he's a he's a hoot. Um, the thin paint sticks to the thicker paint. That's what he would say. So I've thinned this paint down a lot more, and I'm just going over it again. And by doing this, it's going to be less likely to disturb the paint underneath. It's going to lay down a nice thick coat, a thin coat that won't uh, obscure any detail too, which is a nice bonus. And again, I'm just going over here and making sure that anywhere where it reactivated the ink that I've got it in a place I like. There we go. So I'm happy with that. And... water on that. Uh, yeah, this side is where I wanted it. I'm doing this, getting these stark colors, and then I'm going to go back and dirty them up, but what I don't want is it to look like I just didn't take care of the color that was underneath. Here we go. All right, that's repainted. Thin paint on the thicker paint. Make sure you breathe. nice. Well, I put just enough paint in my uh, palette too. I mean, that's nice. Paint is uh, it's not cheap. Doesn't make any sense to waste any if you can afford, if you can uh, figure out how not to. I'm not very good at that usually. Got lucky this time. Especially seeing as how this is a custom painted color. Okay, so now we can see we've got, we've got some packages that are starting to take shape. They're kind of tied together as a unit because of the linen, but um, not, uh, not so much that it's a problem. All right, so I'll just clean my brush. I'm going to get ready to glaze again. Okay. This glaze is still, still good. The dark glaze is still good. I'm going to start with the dark glaze. To 
get the moisture off my brush and I'm gonna go find those spots that needed to be dark up in here I think up in here again this is laying down very little pigment at this point too much there I took some up there there we go nice there we go that's blending more than it's layering uh, there we go Back of the horse. This is the area I wanted that dark pigment the most. Nice. Draw it up towards where I want the pigment. Nice. All right. I can live with that. Draw this down. Not bad. Not bad, I like the hair, that's got a nice. Alright. Looks like I'm just using the dark pigment on this pass. That's fine. dark ink I want to get rid of there. Nice. Okay. Leave that alone. Nice, okay. So, I'm really starting to fine tune this now. Push this pigment around where I want it. So, this is an area right here where I had some trouble on the last pass. So, I'm gonna, yeah, that black. So I really want to draw it this way. I'm gonna live with that. We will do another pass with a much more, uh, much less glaze, more pigment pass, but that's gotta dry a lot. All right, so next up is I wanted a brown pack. So here's a chocolate brown. I wanna stay away from that color that's red. I wanna stay away from ready browns because the horses are red. So I wanna go with more yellow browns. In fact, this, which I was going to use, the cork, is a little too red, so I'm going to put that back and uh, just use this one here. And then I've got my blue and my, my green. So I think I said that I wanted this one to be a brown package. That's way too thick. There we go. That's better. Get in there and jam that in there, but I need to be real careful when I get towards this linen. The linen 
Done. There we go. Not bad. I'm probably going to use this color, this flat earth, as my binding rope. Although, maybe I'll use something lighter. So, one of these is not going to look it has ropes except for if I highlight them. What I might just do is on this one package I might go back and either darken or lighten them up to give it some contrast. So I found a couple of spaces I missed. These have really great textures, but it gives them a lot of nooks and crannies that can avoid paint. All right, uh, I, got, I got one, two, three, four, a bunch of miniatures. So this looks like a balled up bag. I think I'm gonna count this as a piece of uh, a leather wrapped package of some sort. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a couple things. I'm gonna hit it with this. I'm gonna put it in kind of heavy. I'm gonna wet blend it. Because I've got another leather color on my palette right now. All right, so. I want to make sure I don't have a ton of paint, but I want it to still be wet. Yeah, like that, that big puddle needs to go. That ball needs to go. There we go. So now I've got this color here. I'm going to refresh it up. Get some on my brush. Not too much. And I'm going to just... Get in here and mush it around. I like the tops of these balls, give it some leathery look. And now I'm gonna wash my brush off and just get it wet. And there we go. I got a nice little wet blend on there. In fact, I think I can go, uh, I think I can kick that up a notch still. I think I can kick it up a notch, the highest point. There we go. Yeah, and then I get the pigment off and blend it again. Not bad. And now that looks different than that. And let's just wet it one more time and get it Mixed in a little, it's a little too stark on the edges. There we go. All right, and I don't want too many leather boxes on this, but let's put a, maybe this is the, no, oh, that, that color is too close to that. Let's. Put this one over here. Get 
can. I'm not trying to make them uniform, but I'm also figuring that they have kind of the same stuff on them, so. They don't need to be crazy kaleidoscopes. Now, if this was a caravan of Turks or Middle Eastern types that had lots of tapestries, sure, be a little more colorful, but the armies these are going to be fighting with are your dark, typical Dark Age Crusader types. They're going to have regular Middle European type of goods. So that's what I'm going for, Middle European. You know what? I'm kind of liking this color. But I think I'm going to hold up. All right. So I want to go with uh, one of my accent colors now. This green. This Russian uniform highlight green. Go for it a lot. It's just a... Uh, all right, I need to open up that bottle a little bit. There we go. That's all I'm going to need because I'm only going to paint this one tube with it. I guess it's like a rolled up blanket or something. Uh, got a little bit of water on my brush. There we go. So again, I'm using the Pepsi cap for soda cap for my brush cleaner and I can take that extra paint and use it now. Being a little conservative here because this is the last piece and I don't want to grab a bunch of the neighboring detail with it. So here we go. Hey Chaos, how you doing? Sorry, I didn't see you come in there. I was engrossed in my painting. How you been? Or did I miss you? Maybe you came in and left. Love the emotes. Oh, nice. Well, thanks for stopping by. As you see, it's a, it's a new thing for me, and I'm still learning how to do it. I haven't really got a professional setup. This is just my phone. So, just trying it out to see if I like it. And if I do, maybe I'll buy myself some real cameras and um, start to do it. But, you know, I always told you that I painted toy soldiers. Well, here I am painting toy soldiers. This is what I do. I'm not playing computer games or working. I do a little bit of this. So, hey, Meat Saw. Wow, the whole crew's here. Uh, you know, Meat, it's not uh, it's not a watch, but don't you do watches? I've seen some of your watches on the uh, forums, right? Is it you that does watches, or is it uh, that Krauser? Right. It's awful nice of you guys to stop in and have a live audience to perform for. So I don't have any of that fancy streaming stuff with emotes and stuff set up yet. I'm going to learn how to do that. I may have to talk to Chaos and to teach me how to do it. So. Yeah, these are, um, these are WizKid, so they're just uh, pack mules, but I thought that they'd be a nice, um, they'd be a nice generic thing that has some appeal to, you know, D&D &D and stuff like that, and, uh, and I need them for my games because I need pack mules carry the, you know, the materials of war, so I thought it would be a, a good thing to stream and, you know, people might like to see it. So far, I haven't had, uh, hasn't been a big draw, but we'll see. So.
trying to get this blue to be a little lighter. I like a dark blue, but oh, look at that. That looks nice. So I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to paint this, uh, this roll here. I'm going to pretend it's like some kind of nice rug or maybe it's a cloak or something or a blanket. So I'm giving it some color. Oh, no, pack mules. These are whiz kids. I think a pack of two of them is, you know, like, Five bucks, four ninety nine. They're very cheap. Look up uh, Whiz Kids Pack Mules. Um, I'm sure you can get them from a bunch of places. I think Noble Knight Games carries them. I mean, I got them from my local hobby shop, but I'm sure you can get them online. I bet that Whiz Kids even probably sells direct to Amazon. So, and uh, they're pretty easy to paint. They're fun. They got a lot of detail. They come pre-primed. I mean, if uh, with your skills, you could do it. Yeah, and chaos. As far as the schedule, yeah, at some point I'm gonna set up a schedule. Once I get a real professional streaming rig, um, you know, I'll pick a pick a night or two and try to get stick on a schedule. I've got a couple of streams that I like to watch, and um, the. Uh, you know, knowing what night they're on helps. You're totally right about that. So, so there we go. Oh, I have to get the underneath. So. Yeah, what I ought to do, Mead, is if I was a little more organized, I would have had a would have some information on my channel about what I'm painting as far as like where the models come from. That's something I plan to do in the future. So. There we go. So that looks good. And again, this is just my phone strapped to the light above my painting table. So the, the video quality is, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a eight, but not great. So yeah, thanks Cass. I, that's what everyone tells me is take it slow. And again, I'm, I'm here painting my toy soldiers anyways. I'm, I'm just streaming because I thought it would be fun. I'm definitely not stressing about it. That's for sure. And uh, so I'm trying to figure out what color I want these, uh, this pack and this pack. I don't want anything red. I don't want it to look like a pumpkin. I've got enough browns in here. So I think I'm going to go with maybe a gray. So I got a nice blue gray. Uh, yeah, this is a gray blue. That might be too blue. There's too much blue on that. Ah. World War II color, Luftwaffe uniform. This looks like a good choice. Whoops, why is that so wet? Let me shake it up. Let's see if I can get it to come out colorful. There we go. So, so this is a nice, it's a cold gray. And I'm not going to use it on this one because it's too close to that, but I will use it on this one because the green, it's a good contrast with the green. So, so Mitsa, I'm using uh, primary, all acrylics, but primarily my favorite brand is this, this uh, Vallejo model color, it's called. V-A-L-L-E-J-O. It's water washable. It's good stuff. Um, they've got... They've got several lines. They've got model color. They've got game color. And I also use a brand called uh, Scale Color or Scale 75. That's another brand that I like. Um, sorry, let me make it so you can see it. Scale 75. And uh, they're pretty good. And there's a bunch of, I mean, there's a bunch of different paints. Uh, Games Workshop has their paint line called Citadels, uh, which people like. They're kind of like your low level, entry level. Uh, I've got a few of their washes. I like their washes. I don't really like their paints all that much because the pots go to heck. Um, but, uh, yeah. Um, unfortunately, most of these you've either got to get online or from a local modeling shop, like someplace that sells model railroads or model scale model uh, cars and airplanes or toy soldiers. 
Uh, you can't get them at like a Michaels or a Joanne's Fabric or a Hobby Lobby. Uh, the craft paints and those things, those are, um, what's that? Ah, oh, yeah, you can see it. Um, the craft paints that are at Hobby Lobby and Michaels and Joanne's Fabrics, they're great for, you know, painting like wooden stuff and doing crafts, but they don't have the pigment for small figures. So uh, they're, too, they're too thick and clumpy and uh, in order to get good color. Some people use artist oils, you know, like for fine painting. Very, very few people though. Most professional mini painters or even hobby mini painters like myself use uh, Vallejo or Scale Color. There's half a dozen really great acrylic uh, model paint brands. Vallejo is by far the easiest to get. You can get that every color from Amazon. Um, uh, so that's, that's a great place. If you're thinking about buying a, a starter paint set, they've got some pretty decently priced starter paint sets. I think if I do this pack here, it's far enough away from that that I can get away with this using this gray I like. So, so how long were you guys here before I noticed you? Yeah, time to Amazon. Um, after I'm done with the stream meet, if you want to post uh, in the hobbies section of Chaos's Discord, um, I'd be happy to you know review what you're picking and help you you know not spend more money than you need to. Uh, if you're willing to mix paints like. This color here, I mixed green and blue. Uh, this color here, which has a hair in it now, um, uh, I mixed some white and some tan. Uh, I, if you're willing to mix colors, you can get away with a fairly short paint set, especially if you're just going to paint, you know, a couple of mules. And if you like it, if it's something you get into, you can always buy more. I have. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to move the camera, so I'm going to move my my paints. But I have. Three racks like this. Let me see if you can see them on the camera here. I gotta wait like this. Yeah, so three racks like this uh, that have paints in them. And you can see I put a little dollop on each cover. Uh, and they're, you know, they're arranged by, but by far that's a convenience. I painted thousands of miniatures with one rack of that many paints. I mean, you can make every color you want with red, green, and blue, right? If, you, if, you're, if you're artistic enough. Oh, South Korea, you should be able to, um, uh, are you stationed there in the military or are you actually living there as a civilian? Because if you're living there as a civilian, you should be able to get them. Uh, South Koreans do still paint models. Uh, they do, um, I know some Koreans that do like busts, figure busts and stuff. Not a lot of them do war gaming, but some of them do like Warhammer. Um, and, uh, you know, so I'm sure you can get at least Citadel paints there. But if they have Amazon there, you can most likely get Vallejo. Vallejo's from Italy. So if you can get European deliveries, you can probably order from, you know, Italian Amazon too, or UK Amazon, if you want it in English, because Italian Amazon will be in Italian, of course. Um, so if you can get deliveries from Europe, you don't have to get them from the US. Uh, Vallejo actually is imported from Italy. Oh, but you have access to the PX and you have access to FPO. So you could order it from US Amazon and they'll, they'll uh, APO it to you, right? They just have to ship it to your wife. That works. All right, so that's all the grays. And I think I'm going to go with, for this, I'm going to go with something dark. Something very dark. And for that, I think I'm going to go for something bright. So for dark, I'm going to go with... This is a German gray. This is with the Panzer gray. I'm going to go with that. I'm going to stuff that right in this hole because the gray will overwhelm what's in it. And I'm running out of space. Hang on, I'm going to shake the camera. i got to poke a hole in this paint cup. There we go. Yeah, so just order U.S. Amazon. Uh, I can help you pick, a, if you just want to paint a few mules like this, I can help you paint a, you know, one of their starter sets that has like 10 paints. It'll have, 
you know, white, black, uh, you know, half a dozen colors, a silver, a gold, or a steel and a gold. And uh, that's all you would need to do these guys. Uh, that, a cup of water, and uh, you can buy a starter set of brushes. I can help you pick a, an inexpensive set of, you know, three or four brushes that won't set you back a hundred bucks. I mean, you should be able to get three hobby brushes uh, from Amazon, you know, for, for a beginner painter for, you know, under 20 bucks. The starter paint set will probably be 30, 40 bucks. Or maybe probably 30 if you buy the smallest set. And the figures, so the nice thing is, is if you like it, you can uh, you can paint a ton of stuff with it. And if you don't, you're on, you know, your wife's on a base. Just have her find out if there are any other people who paint war, war game figures. War game, a lot of military are war gamers. The other thing you do is find out from your wife if there's anyone on base that paints toy soldiers. Maybe you could go and paint with them for an afternoon. I love to have people come paint with me. And if I if someone if someone wanted to learn how to paint and they came to paint with me, I'd let them use all my paints and my brushes and see if it was for them. I've done that a couple times with friends. Just find someone she knows that is a war gamer. That's the best way to learn. And if you live near me, I'd invite you over and stick a paintbrush in your hand and throw some figures in front of you. All right, my internet hiccuped. Hopefully I'm back. At least I try to be back. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, am I back? I think I'm back. I'm going to reload the page. Yeah, I, my, uh, my, my internet, my whole internet hiccuped. I'm, uh, I'm on Wi-Fi down here in the basement. I got an extender, but it isn't always perfect. And so... Uh, sometimes it just hiccups. You know, I don't know if the uh, aliens get me or what, but it's not pleasant. Probably something I'm going to have to sort out if I'm going to stream full time. I may have to run a wire down here. So, but am I? It looks like I'm back. Am I back? There we go. Well, it looks like you guys are still here, so hopefully you can see me now. Yeah, it looks like I'm, I'm seeing the stream, so you must be. All right, so I like that. This guy's got kind of some dark packages on him. And this guy, I want to put something bright on his package there. So I'm going to use something fancy. Let's see, what do you think? I'm going to pick a couple colors. I'm going to let you guys pick one. What do you say? Sound, sound like fun? So, I could go with uh, this nice blood red. I kind of like that a lot. Um, or, I could go with this fancy purple. This is heavy violet. So, you can see the color right here. Or I could go with, I like this color a lot. This is called Cavalry Brown, and it's a very reddish brick color. Um, so those are your choices. You got blood red, a brick red, a purple. Let me give you one more because the purple is just too tempting if I don't give you another choice. Let's see here. And... I got this, it's called Heavy Warm Gray, but it's kind of a salmon. I like that a lot. So those are your choices. You got, I'm going with some kind of reddish tone. You got purple, salmon, brick, or blood. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah, uh, thanks, I appreciate it. I'll, uh, I'll stop into her stream and say hi, mate. So what do you think? Blood red, brick red, purple, or sin. And it's going to go on this pack right here. So there's a little bit of blue gray here, a little green. Salmon. I like your style, buddy. We're going with a salmon. 
I'm going to put the reds back here. All right. I think you're right. I think the salmon's going to be the 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 kicking. So I'm going to shake that up a little bit more. Oh yeah, this is nice. And I'm gonna I'm gonna actually it's just a tiny bit not quite salmony enough. So I'm gonna I'm gonna kick it up just a little bit. He says with this pink just to give it a little a little more salmon tone because that's a heavy gray and I'm squeezing this in another area because I don't want it to put too much all right so let's grab that pink now watch this put that in there nice all right that looks good to me let's see how this looks let's see how our choice went yeah I like it. It's nice and subdued. It looks like another package. Nice. Good choice, me. I can see that being a popular selection of the stream as I paint some fantasy figures and I let people pick the colors. <laughs> you know, consider calling me Robo Painter. So what's I, I saw Chaos had like a premiere on YouTube today, but I couldn't watch it. It was like I don't know if it was announcing she was gonna be streaming or what. I went there and it, it said you know coming you know nothing uh, nothing broadcasting, but it looked like it was a video that was posted yesterday. Did you see that? Oh, okay, I'll ask her. I'll. Uh, pop in her stream later tonight if she's still broadcasting is uh i know she tends to be a night owl so she's an hour behind me so most likely when i get these done and these are going to be probably pretty close to block painted i'm going to do a little highlighting and stuff but i want to be pretty close to done well that looks pretty cool that it, it's it's not too pink but it and it, it's tough the color uh the color representation on the camera is tough. Let me, let me see if I can put some shadow on the light. See if, yeah, it's just hard. I'll, I'll, I'll post some uh, post some pictures of them when they're done and I'll post them in Cass's Discord so you can see how great the choice you made is, but I like it. It, uh, it looks fantastic. And uh, it'll look really nice highlighted. Okay, all the packs are done. All the packs on this one are done. So the last thing I need to do is I need to go over the whole horses again. I've been doing a, what's called a glazing technique, and this is some advanced stuff that you definitely don't have to do. And I probably shouldn't have done, and I'm not good enough to do, but I'm learning it. And so I used a series of ink washes on this to build up these colors. And so they look a little splotchy now. And what I'm gonna do now is, uh, this is the, the hole I was making them in. I'm gonna do one last pass of them with the color I was using um, which is this color and this color mixed together so I got to get those so it was mostly mahogany brown so I need some of that uh, except for it wasn't mahogany brown because that one wasn't mixed it was the this heavy mahogany so heavy sienna and I had a tiny bit, I wanted it to be a little redder, so I put a tiny bit of this cavalry brown in it, I think. Just a, just a skosh. And there we go. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of this in here, take some of this glaze. This is a, basically a, it's paint without paint in it. It's called glaze medium. I'm gonna thin this out. And then I'm gonna go over the fig, the, the horsey part and like you see here, where I've rubbed up against it, I'm gonna just add a little more color. And this just lays a tiny bit of color down, but it uh, kind of makes it look nice. And I've on purpose left their muzzles white because these are mules, and I looked online and mules have white muzzles. Who knew? Oh, it's funny how you. You do a little research and you learn stuff. 
So there we go. So this technique I'm using, you know, it just layers the paint on a little at a time. And I'm not very good at it. I, I learned it watching other people stream. But and I'm I'm laying it on too thick. I don't have enough oops. I don't have enough glaze in my ink. But oh, now I've done it. I covered his eyeball up. You can fix that. There you go. So I'm kind of making a mess of this glazing thing. We need a couple more layers in here. Yeah, the problem is that this glaze is too thick. So this is the stuff I'm using called glaze medium. And I'm going to thin this out a lot. I've got way too much pigment in it. There we go. That's how it should look. So it should look a lot more like that. This is going to give me less trouble. Yeah, that's better. I think I can pull this out of here if I just grab the paint and drag it. So that's one of the things that I learned that, you know, you think painting, you think, oh, I'll just get the paint down. A lot of times it's, it's okay to drag the paint around on the figure and get it where you want it. Pull some off, put some on. A lot of the advanced techniques have to do with not being afraid to have the paint half dry in your figure and moving it around. That's what this glazing is all about is letting you do that. Put little tiny, tiny, tiny bits of paint on at a time. Yeah, I'm gonna take some off here. Yeah, I've got way too much here, way too much. There we go. And I'm gonna just drag a little bit of There we go. Nice. I'm happy with that. So, so me. Am I right about remembering that you do watches? You rebuild watches. You know, like old classic. You know, good watches. Because I've seen. I think. I thought I saw. Are, the, are those your watches that are on Chaos's hobby forum? On our Discord. Helga, yeah, those things. I gotta talk to Helga someday. That uh, that stuff blows me away. I I'm kind of amazed that I mean the precision and the small workmanship of that has got to be insane. Um, you know, I've worked with some small stuff before. I mean, you know, I paint miniatures, but that kind of that that watch stuff scares me. <laughs> to be honest, I uh, I don't know how he, how he does it, but it looks awesome. So, there we go. Yeah, I'm kind of fixing my sins here. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. All right, the back of this horse needs some love. He's kind of splotchy here, so I'm going to lay another layer of this glaze in. Part of it's because I think I was handling it when I was painting the packs and messed up some of the pigment I laid down. And that's something I wouldn't do if I was not on a stream, as I would let it sit and uh, dry in between. But when you're on a stream, you kind of push it, you know? All right, that's not bad. Tip of that ear wants to stay white, which kind of messes me up. That face is kind of staying brown. I think I might, I might cheat on this face and actually put some paint on it. Because it's not quite doing what I want. Once that paint dries, I'll come back and glaze it in. 
a little better. Same thing here with the shoulder, just needs a little more paint. So. So it's nice. I mean, it's a if you like to learn about history, if you like military stuff, if you like gaming. We got guys in our club who've never painted a toy soldier. We got other guys in our club that aren't really big into history. We got some people like myself that like like it all. Sorry, I had to go off screen there for a second. I'm making a little bit of a mess of this this area right here. I need to get some of the. I got some paint on the. On the clear here, I need to get rid of. I went crazy on my glaze. In fact, I'm going to fix that because I don't like the fact that I messed it up. I'm going to take a little bit of that Mojave White and a little bit of the brown. There it is. That's the color I used. I'm going to just fix this here. Here we go. Crime solved. There's a there's a bunch of streams of people doing this painting, uh, Warhammer and stuff like that. There aren't very many people doing. I mean, this is this these could be fantasy or historical, but there aren't too many people doing true historical war games. But if you want to look up mini painting. Um, on Twitch, it's uh, just look up miniature painting. I think the actual the key is one of the keys to this stream. Um, that's a great search you can do to uh, you know find other people painting minis. Like I said, most of them are painting science fiction or fantasy, but you still get to learn a lot. I mean, I watch a lot of those streams because those are the guys that really know how to do this stuff. I mean, there's a lot of great historical painters, but they don't stream. If you want to learn from streamers. Um, you know the the Warhammer guys are the they're the pros, um, and, or just come to my channel. The streamers I think are really good. Um, my stream will automatically stream there. So if you just watch, uh, to keep an eye on Twitch. Uh, anyone that my stream is broadcasting when I'm offline is someone that I watch, and so you know it's someone I would recommend to watch. Um, there's a bunch of them. Some of my favorites are Aid Cook and Samson's Arts. Uh, they're not only are they great painters, but they're like really pleasurable guys to watch. You know, like, you know kind of like Bob Ross is pleasurable to watch. Not that they have Bob Ross's oh happy little tree style, but that you know it's fun to watch them do what they're doing because they're enjoying it and they're you know what they're saying is is interesting. Uh, you know their streams are a little more like a party than a uh, you know, than a, you know, a how to paint show. So. All right. Well, I think that's all the glazing I dare do until these dry, but they're looking a lot better, a lot closer. And so I think the next thing I want to do is I want to do some dry brushing or some highlighting. I think I'll just do intentional highlighting. I'll get fancy. So I'm going to take some of these lighter colors. So I'm going to take some Mojave White, mix it into the. This is Flat Earth, which I used for this pack and for that pack. 
Uh, and so I'm going to mix a little Mojave White into it and get a, a lighter version of it. That looks pretty good. That paint was just wet enough. I'm going to thin it out a little bit because it dried out. There we go. And now I'm going to get my brush almost dry so I have some control. And now I'm going to go over here and pick out some edges. And uh, you know, some of the folds and stuff. Some of the high spots. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. There we go. Uh, that's better. Using the side of the brush, kind of grabbing the, the stuff that sticks out. Not really dry brushing as much. Dry brushing, you'd be hitting the whole thing with a big brush and very haphazard manner. I'm trying to grab just the stuff I want. That's pretty good. I think I can use that same light color elsewhere. Um, hang on a minute, I've seen a crime that's happening that I need to fix. This is pooling up here, I need to get rid of that. I don't want it to look like a wash. All right, uh, back to what I was doing. So, oops, brush got all of whack. There we go. There we go. That's better. Nice. There. That just looks like a little more interesting than flat. And I think that's the only place that color is there. But here, I can use it here. I can use it on this piece here. There we go. Now this is gray and that's light blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this salmon and put it in the gray, lighten that gray up, give it a, a warmer t Because I have the salmon on the palette, might as well. So this is, I told you about mixing colors. I don't know that brand. But um, link it in Chaos's uh, hobbies, and I'll take a look at it. I bet for a similar amount of money I can find you something. Just because it's acrylic paints doesn't mean it's good for models. Um, most of the model paints that you're going to see are going to come in one of two form factors. They're going to come in a pot that looks like this. It looks like an eyedropper bottle. Um, or they're going to come in a pot that looks like this. So one of these two form factors. Occasionally they'll come in something that looks like this, um, uh, just a little bit bigger, but not very often. You definitely want to avoid anything for models. Uh, starting out, you want to avoid anything that looks like this. These are um, craft paints, um, and they're cheap, but I only use them for terrain. And then there's these type of acrylics, and these are for painting, um, you know, paintings. And they're also not really a good beginner starting paint. So that's my advice is avoid stuff that looks like, I mean, inexpensive is great, but you, your, your, your experience, your first time experience will be um, far detracted. And I, I, I promise you, if I go look a, a little bit, I can find you a, a hobby paint set in that same price range or very similar. And you'll have, fun, you'll have a lot more fun if you're not being frustrated by the fact that the paints don't work. Uh, the other thing you want to be able to do is you want to be able to thin your paints um, so they're nice and thin. And that means that the paint really has to have a lot of pigment. Um, and the, that's what the, the, the hobby paints have, that they have a lot of pigment in them. All right, this top piece has got a lot of stuff on it. And I am going to dry brush that. So here's a neat technique is I've just taken a brush, I've dipped it in the paint, 
I've rubbed it on my paper towel and you see there's no paint on it, right? But when I come back, you'll notice that there's still just enough. I'll take just a little bit more. I'll do it here so you can see it. There's just enough that when it hits the high spots, a tiny bit of paint rubs off. And this is great when you're doing things like bears and hair and stuff like that. So you'll notice that that, um, that thing was dark, dark gray, and now it's dark gray with light gray highlights on it. And I didn't really have to work too hard from that. And I'm gonna do the same thing with these manes, right? I'm gonna hit them with just a little bit of gray to highlight them, the same thing with the tail. I need a little bit more paint on my brush, rub it off. There we go. And you can do a little or a lot. So here we go, hit the, hit the mane, the tail. It's a very beginner technique, but I'm a beginner. I've only been doing this 30 years, uh, but it works. Now here, this uh, pumpkin shaped pack, I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna do it with this Mojave white color, which is a super light tan. And we'll do the same trick. And there's so little paint on this brush that I'm not even gonna bother cleaning it up. I'm just gonna, here we go. And there we go. So I got a little gray, a little tan. There we go. Actually, uh, it's a little darker than I want. I probably should have cleaned the brush, so I'm going to go back over it with some straight Mojave white. It was more gray in that brush than I thought. Yeah, uh, I'll, uh, I'll take a look and I'll post something for you, Meet, on, uh, on Chaos's Amazon. So... There we go. So if you're, if you're in Korea, what time is it there? p.m. in the afternoon okay so it's almost tomorrow so it's tomorrow there nice that actually works out pretty good all right, so I've hit these with little, a little Mojave White. I've dirtied up this pack a little bit. I'm liking this a lot. So this tan thing, next thing I'm gonna do is, I'm not gonna do this tonight because these have to dry, but is I'll, I'll do what's called a wash. So I make up a, this, this is my own wash. I make it up myself, but you can buy stuff. These are, um, this is the one thing from Citadel I like is these have these washes. This one's called Devlin Mud. This is like a brown. This one's called Griffin Tone Sepia. That's like a, um, well, sepia is like the color of the horses. And then um, there's a, this one is the one a lot of people like. It's called Nuln Oil. And it's a, it's a black wash in a really light medium. And that's what that big tube that I made was. It's my own version of that. But you'll see a lot of people using those Citadel washes. It's one thing from Citadel that is really high quality. Uh, a lot of people like um, Nuln Oil and uh, um, Nuln Oil and the uh, uh, the Griffin Tone Sepia and the Devlin Mun are the ones that people like. So I will put a wash on at least the packs of these. I don't know if I wash the horses. I'm working so hard on getting the, the right, but the packs it'll it'll show up all the all the contours and everything. But the paint's all so wet that I don't quite want to do that yet. Um, and so all I'm going to do now is I want to get the, the last little bit of these uh, ready to dry overnight. And I want to pull my, my big brush out again and do one last pass and get... Every time I handle these, the knuckles keep getting 
mash because I keep touching them. So I want to put some pigment on those. I'm just going to do one less pass in the pigment here. There we go. I want to like that. There we go. There we go. But yeah, we can definitely uh, um, you can definitely paint while I'm on the stream and ask me questions. I'd be happy to help you. I'd also be happy to you know step on to Discord and have a two-way conversation with you person to person sometime, um, or even do a Zoom or you know some kind of where you show me what you're doing uh, on a, on the camera, you know, screen share type of thing, video call or FaceTime or whatever you guys, whatever you use for that. Um, I'd be happy to talk you through stuff. I, I like teaching people how to paint. And like I said, I am not an expert. I've been doing it for a long time, but as far as, you know, quality of work, there's some people that do some amazing stuff here that their techniques are a lot better than mine. I just have fun with it. You know, as a war gamer, I paint a lot of figures and sometimes that taints how I do it. <clears throat> you know, the guys who do the fancy figures, sometimes they'll spend, you know, a lot of time on one figure and you know I gotta paint and they you know, I mean those armies are fairly big but I have to paint sometimes you know hundreds of figures in an army and so I gotta decide do I want the army or do I want the one character to be really really great uh, this is an exercise in having fun I was trying uh, some new techniques here these glazing techniques and so I didn't mind spending a little extra time on these I could easily have painted these ho these uh, mules flat color in a wash and my normal techniques in uh, you know probably an hour for the two figures and I've been at this for uh, a lot longer than that so and I'm only part way done so but I'm having fun I'm learning doing it on the stream which doesn't help your efficiency for sure but it's fun but yeah, as far as a hobby and the other thing is is once you've got these toy soldiers you can use them for a game. I mean, people use them for role-playing games, fantasy games, science fiction games. I got a buddy of mine who's doing. Um, I painted a bow, uh, a uh, job at the hut for him for his uh, Star Wars campaign. He's doing a, a role-playing game in the Star Wars universe, and his wife paints all his figures for him, and she's a great painter. But he's GMing it. He wanted the encounter with Boba Fett to be. I mean, sorry, job of the hut to be. Um, a surprise and so he had me paint Boba the Fett and when she showed up for the game he's like okay now you've got your encounter with the boss and she's like I didn't paint a boss he's like I know you didn't but here it is <laughs> and uh, so that was kind of fun is uh, you get to do that so let me see if I can show these off as best I can on the stream I'm gonna try to hold them somewhere where you can see them and uh, let's see I'll use the camera there we go so they're a little oversaturated because my light's too close, but uh, they look a little better in real person in real life. The colors are really washed out. But once I give them a wash, they'll uh, they'll look pretty nice. And then uh, I also, before I give them the wash, I've got to paint all of the straps on all the bundles and all the horse gear. So but yeah, I'd be uh, happy to help you. Um, but I think for tonight, um, yeah, not, like I said, when they're done, I'll show some, I'll post some pictures. When I get a better camera, it'll look better. I think that's all I'm going to do for tonight. Uh, I really appreciate you stopping by. It was awesome having someone to talk to and paint with. That was pretty cool. That's what the streaming's all about. Um, and I may do a little more tomorrow. I may do more sometime in the future. But if you, uh, if you put the little, um, uh, follow on there and you just check it'll say something and I'll uh, at some point I may get some announcements going where it lets you know I don't know how to do that yet but I know streamers do that but uh, yeah just check back and I'll maybe I'll post on Chaos's discord if I'm going to do it again soon so you can see it if you want to watch you can always be playing your uh, playing your games while you do it too just throw me on your second screen no. all right uh, I'm gonna sign out thanks a lot for stopping by me <clears throat>